So three years ago, I moved here in what my parents describe as a quarter life crisis of sorts, moved from New Jersey. For those of you who have not yet explored the Garden State, I cannot stress enough how obnoxious the traffic congestion can be. The possibility of congestion influences all of the travel decisions that you make. As you can imagine, not only is this depressing and stressful, but it's also inefficient. It's known that there's gonna be congestion, but the amount of congestion is unpredictable and unavoidable. So you always leave a buffer of extra time. If it's important, you leave a big buffer. JFK Airport is located on Long Island, and according to Google Maps, it's technically an hour and six minutes away. But ever vigilant, Google also warns me that because of traffic, I wanna assume it's gonna take me an hour and a half. If I wanna make my flight, I leave four hours ahead of time, and I pack a lunch. The problem is a lack of options. Instead of a network of solutions to maximize individual utility, the roads monopolize your utility. Congestion and time buffers are built into your life. Helicopter taxis from Manhattan for $200 begin to seem normal. As a non-productive activity, congestion hurts the economy. You spend extra money on gas idling in traffic, staring at the car in front of you instead of being at work. Your brakes wear down faster, the air quality suffers, it takes longer for an ambulance or fire truck to get to your house in an emergency. But adding lanes actually attracts new travelers like gas expands to fill a container. Think about what roads you would use if there were no interstates in the valley or the interstate was always congested. Traffic would be dispersed and each of you would be choosing your own best option. But with interstates, you would most likely avoid that. Over the next 13 slides, I'm not gonna try to convince you to get rid of your car. But I am going to talk about how traveling alone in an automobile should be a worst case scenario and only be one tool in our arsenal. Here are four examples over the last two decades where removing major highways did not create problems elsewhere, but instead of that allowed individuals to reevaluate their options. The elevated highway in Seoul carried 190,000 cars per day, but was torn down instead of being replaced. The reason we don't think about how much time our cars spend parked is because 99% of the trips Americans take, the parking spot at your destination is free. But this will change as our state continues to expand and businesses can no longer absorb these costs. The 43 cents we pay in gas tax for a gallon of gas seems like a bargain because you're not thinking about the other ways that you pay for roads. One lane mile of highway that only lasts 30 years costs anywhere from four to $10 million to build and $240,000 during that time frame to maintain. Car manufacturers over the last century have done a fantastic job of tying your self-confidence to your shiny, fast car. But I'm wondering which one of these guys would you rather be? First of all, guy number one needs to get a ticket for being on a cell phone, and guy number two, well, I hope guy number one doesn't accidentally hit him. Times are tough. There are bills to pay, terrorists to catch, and volatile financial futures. There are things you need, things you want, things you can do without, and things you would rather do without when money gets tight. What portion of your income is spent affording you the ability to just get to work? What would you do with that extra money if you didn't have to spend it on oil changes or tires? Would $3 for a bus trip, bus trip still seem expensive? Would spending a few extra minutes getting to a train station be a hassle? What about the people who can't afford to buy a car and do wanna to go to college and do wanna provide for themselves? They contribute to that pool of money that affords the highways. Are we gonna give them an alternative to the automobile? When you compare the vehicle miles traveled in different states to the gross domestic product, a normal measure for productivity, it turns out people who drive less are more productive. They spend more time contributing to the economy and their communities and less time and money on their cars. We can better use the roads we already have. Car sharing, where you don't even need to own a car but borrow it for chunks of time, already exists in Utah. 50% of trips we take are under three miles. Can we try walking and cycling for more of these trips? Utah has a high quality highway system now that already gets us everywhere we need to go, but we're not using it as efficiently as we could. Instead of wasting millions of dollars widening a highway here and there, we can invest in managing the demand on highways and prevent congestion to maximize value to the user. Diversity in our transportation investments, diversity in our portfolio of transportation choices, and diversity in how we spend our own money will help us recover from this and future economic recessions. No longer will not having a car cripple our ability to make ends meet. As Americans, we can and will adjust to not being dependent on cars. We have better things to spend our money on than highways that contribute to the decline of the economy and our health. I'd like to leave you with a quote. When I go biking, I repeat a mantra of the day sensations. Bright sky, blue, oh wait, bright sun, blue sky, warm breeze. This helps me transcend the traffic, ignore work, leave all the mind theaters behind and focus on nature. I still must abide by the rules of biking, of gravity, of traffic, but I'm mentally far away from civilization. 
The world is breaking someone else's heart. 